The eyes of the auto world are on Frankfurt again for the International Motor Show and the unveiling of 159 world premieres. The IAA is showcasing both hybrid drives as well as new models. Volkswagen's newest revelation is the Golf Sports Van, scheduled to go on sale in mid-2014. It looks a good deal more dynamic than its popular predecessor, the Golf Plus, which makes up one-fourth of the Golf's total sales. Heinz Jakob Neusser, head of powertrain development at VW, said the car makers specifically targeted young families. This is reflected in the stretch proportions, which gives its design a more dynamic look. The increased interior space now offers plenty of room, giving it greater comfort and a bigger trunk capacity, even though the wheelbase has only been extended slightly. Pricey but pacey, Porsche reveals its long-awaited 918 Spyder Super Sports car in production trim. The plug-in hybrid can produce almost 900 horsepower and reach 100 kilometers per hour in under three seconds. Maximum speed is 345 kilometers per hour. That speed comes at a price, in excess of 760,000 euros. BMW is also presenting a plug-in hybrid production model. The i8's performance and economy are exceptional. 362 horsepower and its maximum torque of 570 newton meters catapult it to 100 kilometers per hour in just 4.4 seconds. Fuel efficiency is under 2.5 liters per 100 kilometers. The asking price in Germany, a lofty 126,000 euros. BMW Head of Development Herbert Dies calls it an evolutionary process, continuously improving engines, both diesel and gasoline. BMW is also aiming for a revolutionary approach by focusing on electromobility with their i models, formerly the i3 and now the i8. Mercedes presents its newest GLA family member, a brand new compact crossover. The new model shares its platform with the A and B class and is designed to rival models such as the BMW X1, the Mini Countryman, and the Audi Q3. Since the Mercedes GLA is based on the A class, the basic edition will feature front wheel drive, while the bigger engine versions will come with four wheel drive. Hyundai is heating up the small car segment with the youngest generation of its i10. The revamped model comes with more comfort and the kind of interior space you would usually find in a higher segment. The new i10 offers top quality and a high degree of functionality. The interior styling boasts a fresh makeover. The youngest member of Seat's Lyon family comes in the shape of a station wagon. The side-on view reveals the Lyon ST's full proportions. It comes with 587 liters of cargo space, increasing to 1,470 liters with the rear seats folded down. Toyota has been enjoying the limelight with its new Yaris Hybrid R. This edition has a sportier look than the regular Yaris. An innovative paint finish adds to the dynamic appearance. Its global race engine is capable of generating 300 horsepower. Toyota's hybrid models are extremely popular in Germany, accounting for one in four Toyota sales there. Lexus presents the new LFNX Study. The compact crossover uses a smaller variant of the car maker's full hybrid drive technology. Signature front lighting with LED daytime running lights and two air intakes at the side give the car a distinctive look. Lexus is eager to gauge visitor response in Frankfurt. Three and a half million cars in 10 years. The Mazda 3 has been the Japanese car maker's all-time top seller. The design of this new addition is reminiscent of its big brother, the Mazda 6. The stylish hot hatch showed off its endurance credentials by covering the 15,000 kilometers from Hiroshima to Frankfurt by road. Volvo showcases its new concept coupe. It features a plug-in gasoline hybrid driveline that can generate an output of 294 kilowatts 
and a peak torque of 600 Newton meters. The broad rear has LED lamps, and the 21-inch rims with a five-spoke design are reminiscent of an elegant Gran Turismo. Nissan is celebrating the world premiere of its latest X-Trail, marking an image change from off-roader to crossover. The new design features elements such as blind spot warning, active ride control, and adaptive damping. Also new is a camera system projecting a 360-degree view of the car's surroundings onto a monitor inside the cabin. Skoda's latest offering is both highly practical and an eye-catcher. The car maker presents the Rapid Spaceback, a sedan version of the hatchback. It offers 415 liters of trunk space without compromising the rear passenger compartment. The green line version of the Rapid Spaceback officially needs only 3.8 liters of diesel per 100 kilometers. Suzuki is targeting a younger audience, which is why the SX4S Cross is particularly colorful. The compact crossover costs 19,490 euros in Germany with standard equipment. The basic edition offers many features such as air conditioning, power windows and CD radio and the diesel version comes with heated front seats. But the Frankfurt Motor Show also features the classics. Chevrolet presents its fifth generation of Camaros with technical updates. The built-in MyLink infotainment system with 7-inch touchscreen comes in all production models. Voice recognition and a reversing camera are likewise standard fitted. Car tester Sasha introduces the GT3, the modern performance version of the 911 with a water-cooled engine. Its predecessors, built between 1972 and 97, still went under the name Carrera RS. For Porsche experts, the GT3 has always been more than just a sports car. It's not just one of the quickest 911s, it's also one of the most upstanding. Less electronics, but all the more freedom behind the wheel. You need considerable experience to master this beast, as seen in its drivership. Your typical GT3 driver is a mature married man, explains Chief Engineer Andreas Poininger. It's often used as a third or fourth car. Most owners only clock up a few thousand Ks a year. It's chiefly for personal enjoyment. The GT3's 350 kilowatts of power propel it to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.5 seconds. Top speed is 315 kilometers per hour. Official fuel consumption is 12.4 liters for 100 kilometers. And here is the latest edition. Its contours are very similar to its predecessor. The body modifications are only apparent at second glance. The large air inlets give it a mean look. And of course, it comes with Xenon lights. Their round housings are a 911 signature feature. In total, the sportiest member of the 911 family weighs in at just 1,430 kilograms. It's lower, wider, and longer than the basic model, and is standard fitted with chunky 20-inch sport tires. That doesn't rule out the possibility of aquaplaning, however. There's downforce galore thanks to the mighty rear spoiler. Underneath is a 3.8-liter rear engine with a sumptuous 440 newton meters of torque. According to Porsche headquarters, Sasha explains, every new generation needs its own revolution. In this case, it's farewell to manual transmission. The new dual-clutch gearbox can shift speeds in 100 milliseconds. It remains to be seen what Porsche purists will make of this. Ja, 
Future Porsche drivers will be able to come to terms with the setup pretty fast, reckons Sasha. Of course, you can still use the steering wheel paddles to shift. You can also set the automatic gear stick to enable manual shifting. Among the other new features is the active rear axle steering. Around type bends, the rear wheels are tilted by servos by up to 1.5 degrees in order to compensate for the longer wheelbase. The engineers also changed the rear axle differential lock that distributes the drive torque between the wheels. It's now electronically, not mechanically controlled. The 911 GT3 cuts a very sporty figure on the inside, too. The aluminum and leather trim gives the interior an extra touch of class. The instruments are similarly elegant. The car oozes quality. You can't miss the speedometer, which goes up to 350 kilometers per hour. On board is the Porsche Active Suspension Management, an electronically adjustable and continuous damping system. PASM translates into even better handling. The GT3 stats are impressive, says Sasha. It boasts 350 kilowatts of power, needs just 3.5 seconds to hit 100, and has 440 newton meters of torque. This car is designed for the racetrack. Many people use the GT3 like a piece of sports equipment as a third or fourth car, so fuel economy is secondary. The price tag might be relevant, though, some 137,000 euros. A French court has lifted a ban on certain Mercedes models. Sales have been frozen due to the use of an old EU banned air conditioning coolant. The ruling means Mercedes can continue selling new models using their old coolant in France. Judges accepted Daimler's main argument that the new EU compliant coolant may catch fire more easily. Greenpeace also rejects the new coolant on ecological grounds. Bentley has made its Continental GT models a tad sportier. The new S versions of the coupe and convertible are around 10 millimeters lower sprung and come equipped with steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. The all-wheel drive system makes the most of the twin turbo V8 engine with a 388 kilowatt output and 680 newton meters of torque the convertible dashes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 4.5 seconds top speed is 308 in europe demand for suvs continues unabated so it's little wonder that Ford is out to grab a piece of the action with its second-generation Kuga. The new model looks fresher and more dynamic. Together with Germany's Auto Club ADAC, we're taking a closer look at the Kuga from the inside. That's because it's not just the vehicle's exterior that's been given an overhaul. The engines are new too. Martin Rudorfer from the ADAC points out that Kuga's 140 horsepower four-cylinder engine, with its 320 newton meters of torque, it produces adequate power, yet is pleasantly quiet. The Kuga also aims to please when it comes to fuel economy. In our tests, it consumes 6.6 .6 liters of diesel per 100 kilometers. That's fairly decent for an SUV, but is higher than the manufacturer's fuel economy figures. The engineer says our test car is equipped with all-wheel drive, an advantage in snowy or slippery conditions. But the Kuga is not really an off-roader in his opinion. Its six-speed transmission suits the engine, and the suspension is well-tuned. And thanks to Ford's curve control and torque vectoring control systems, the Kuga can easily navigate obstacles. The compact SUV has a braking distance of 36 meters from a speed of 100 kilometers an hour. 
But first and foremost, an SUV should be practical, and the Cougar is. Its variable trunk space can hold between 445 and 890 liters of cargo, with a flat cargo floor. Drivers who have their hands full, but have a second to spare, will appreciate the automatic trunk opener. And to close it, you can always use your foot. The wide C pillars spoil the view a little, and while the Cougar's cabin boasts quality workmanship, it's a little too busy. The seats are very comfy. Vor allem für junge Lifestyle-Familien thinks the new Cougar is a vehicle for young, fashion-conscious families. It offers plenty of space for work and play and looks sporty. And he says the price is right. Our test vehicle with titanium trim sells for just over 31,000 euros. The Ford Cougar has a starting price of just under 25,000 euros in Germany. The 6 Series convertible is a car for all seasons and a real joy when hunting down the last rays of summer sunshine. Especially in this edition with its extra long hood, set back cabin position and extended wheelbase. Car reviewer Sophie Hell finds the rear view somewhat obscured by the roof. She recommends the optional rear view camera. Fortunately, the weather plays ball, meaning that Sophie can quickly put the top away and out of sight. The roof can be opened or closed while driving. It speeds up to 40 kilometers an hour. Now the open top 6 series can really show its sunnier side. Adaptive suspension enhances the ride comfort. The slightly concave trunk lid creates light and shadow effects. The bi-Xenon headlights likewise have a charismatic look. The front section's distinctive appearance is further defined by the LED daylight running lights. Sophie's first impression is pretty positive. It's big, comfortable, and a four-seater, altogether pretty slick. In her eyes, this is a dream car. The low-lying and slightly protruding kidney-shaped grille plus the sweep of the hood set the car sights firmly on the road ahead. The designer brigade at BMW sought aquatic inspiration for the exterior. This convertible has flowing water contours all over. The flat extended body and the wide rear give the car power and character. The roof, seen here in fast mo, needs 19 seconds to open up. Closing takes 24 seconds. With the top open, chrome trim guides your eyes across the car. The rear windshield is practical, says Sophie, and can also be raised with the roof down. It's made of glass and has built-in heating. She finds this car more of a two plus two seater due to the lack of space for rear passengers. If you do insist on sitting at the back, there's help in the shape of automatic seat adjustment. The front cabin features aluminum trim and is arranged around the driver in typical BMW style. The 640D convertible is standard fitted with an 8-speed sports automatic transmission. Leather seats that reflect sunlight mean that passengers get a comfortably cool welcome even on hot days. And you'll need a cool head behind the wheel with this kind of acceleration. 630 newton meters of torque push the car to 100 kilometers per hour in 5.5 seconds and give it a top speed of 250. The new 640D convertible has a stiffer suspension and its wheelbase is now seven and a half centimeters longer. You have a variety of driving modes available. There's comfort for a gentler ride. For more aggressive outings, switch to sports mode. The gears are then held longer and the steering is more direct.
After a day out in this luxury convertible, Sophie sums up the sports model. The maker claims the 640D convertible is extremely economical, burning up 5.6 liters of fuel for 100 kilometers. Sophie's experience suggested a figure closer to 8 liters. This is still a dream car for her, though, although with a starting price of 87,000 euros, it's likely to remain just a dream. For nine years, VW Beatles fans from across Europe have been flocking to northern Germany each August. They come to take part in the Sunshine Festival, the biggest gathering of bugs on the continent. Over 400 Beatles, old and new, met in the city of Lübeck before driving together to the Baltic Sea Resort of Travemünde. After taking a short detour through the old town of Lübeck, famous for its marzipan, the convoy heads for the highway. Here they turn plenty of heads, nothing but beetles, for as far as the eye can see. Finally, the tour participants reach Travemunde. Normally it's a quiet holiday resort, popular with families and seniors. But today, Beatlemania has broken out, and close to a thousand fans of Volkswagen's bestseller have descended on the town. Drivers first look for a parking space. Then they go for a dip, or wander around, admire the cars, and talk shop with other owners. Original model VW Bugs, new Beatles, and the latest generation are all on show. In contrast to other car meets, the Beetle Sunshine Tour places greater emphasis on trim than technology. But there's one exception, a Beetle souped up by professional tuner Sidney Hoffman. Along with its neon colors, it boasts a more powerful engine, but this professional won't tune a Beetle too much. Hoffman says he's a friend of original equipment manufacturer's style. When VW makes a bumper, a lot of people have to put a lot of thought into it. He doesn't like to add a bunch of fiberglass parts because they ruin rather than enhance the car's shape. The tuner says you can do enough with existing things and use little highlights and details to change the look. In Travemünde, no one feels compelled to transform their cars. Tuners and purists enjoy a peaceful coexistence. And no one's engaging in heated debates about which is the best Beetle engine, an air or a water-cooled one. Well, there were just two Beetle generations, says Hoffman. There was a distinction between original and new Beetle drivers. But now the third generation's here. They mix more. Participants who choose to decorate their cars put their heart and soul into it, whether it's a movie-style bug, a police car, or a convertible with a knitted cover. Owners keep dreaming up new ideas. Some are quite time-consuming. This man's partner wrote to her mom about an idea. She asked if it would be possible to knit a covering for a beetle. She and three other gals worked on it three times a week since February. This is the result. Sometimes partners just have to take a back seat. Incidentally, some Beatle fans met their partners here on previous Sunshine Tours. This man is from the Sauerland, but lives in Cologne. She says she's from the Emsland. But they met, partied and got to know one another here. That was five years ago. Maybe their child will continue the tradition someday. A couple from Duisburg wrote another chapter in their family history when they decorated their new Beetle convertible as a wedding or anniversary vehicle. This weekend happened to be their 30th wedding anniversary, reveals the husband, so they decided to take part in the tour, decorate their car, and dress in white. 
And speaking of anniversaries, the Beatles Sunshine Tour celebrates its 10th one next year.